So, welcome to another episode of How I Spent the Apocalypse. This is Lynn. You'll see Selena in a minute. <clears throat> she was gone for quite a while and the weather has really been bad, so I thought I'd go see what she was doing. I walked over here and heard noise, realized what she was doing, and I thought I'd show you what she's going to end up with. She does a lot of building with things that you have to take from nature directly. Right now she is peeling logs. These are some cedar logs that she has already peeled. They are sized to be used as poles on the pole barn that she's going to be building. Over here are some of the thicker ones that she's going to be using for uprights. Before I walk over to show you what Selene is doing, I want to show you one other thing we've been doing. She normally peels over here, but because the weather's been so bad, she's over in a place that's covered in case it rains. This pile of stuff right here, that's the bark that she peels off these logs. And it's still sitting here along with that twine because the next time I get out of the house, I'm gonna come over and continue my project which is to take that bark and make these bundles. These bundles, which are actually tied with bark too because it was fresh, those bundles are fire starter bundles that we will use this winter in our wood stove to start fires to warm our house. So now I'm going to walk over show you a few things as I do it. Straight ahead of me is one of the pastures we have on this other place right next door. And that is our billy goat, Casper, eating exactly what she does not want eaten. You'll notice that there is a fence around it to contain it because otherwise it would go nuts. And if you can see, there is a wire a uh, four by four piece of four by four behind it to keep the billy goat out of completely it, eating it to pieces. He loves it, of course. That's what animals do. They eat what you don't want eaten. You might be able to hear him. There's another rooster right there. We try to keep at least a rooster in every pasture because they help to keep down ticks and other bugs. Some of the tables that she's built with slabs right here they're really awesome tables and benches. When we have events and stuff here, that's where a lot of people sit. That's a stage, you probably can't see it now. It's beautiful at night because there's a solar light where it lights up. And you can hear her. The noise that set me searching. because the, the limbs, because it makes it harder to peel. This is my Lynx battery operated chainsaw, which I love. Uh, for most of my life, I've run the great big gas chainsaws and they have a lot more power. And for certain applications, I would still go get my steel and wouldn't mess with this. But for the most part at my age, I'm tired of doing this. Because here's what happens with a chainsaw. With a chainsaw or a lawnmower, if you've had mowers, you know the same thing, right? Or a weed eater, any of that shit. If you started in one pole or two poles, that'd be great. It never does that. Even if it does that the first time in the day, it doesn't do that the rest. The rest of the time, you're yanking your freaking arm off. So I like that. That one is fantastic, actually. It has a lot of power. I'm peeling these logs, they're cedar, and I'm peeling them because, first off, they're just easier to use and the, the bark falls off anyway and it's just nasty. A lot of times I'll just build something with the bark on it 
because it literally takes as long to peel something as it does to just build what build whatever it is you're building but one of the problems we have here now thank you climate change you know that non-existent thing i keep talking about i don't know why i do that i'm obviously a liberal commo commie pinko but at any rate because of climate change we now have bugs we didn't used to have and one of them is a bug that of all things eats cedar what it does is it's killing a lot of our cedar trees, juniper actually, they're actually juniper trees, but it gets in between the bark and the inside and it eats the inner bark, which is how the tree feeds, so it kills the trees. But it will also get in them when they're logs and it'll eat it up. And I'm not gonna say it looks bad, but it does look real good. Depends on what you wanna do with it, whether you wanna look at that bug eating wood or not. But uh, I'm getting ready to build a pole bar. Now, I could just wait till I could buy lumber. But uh, this is the apocalypse. So it's going to be a while. Now, that tool I was using is called a draw knife. And if this log was dry, the only way I'd get it peeled is with the draw knife. But the best time to harvest logs to use is in the spring because then the sap is coming up and the bark will just peel off. And so it's actually faster. Once I get that first strip taken out with the draw knife, it's actually faster to just peel it with a knife. And yes, it's a very slow, tedious process anyway. And these are not peeling as easy as the last ones I got because these have been sitting on the ground for a week. The sooner you can peel them after you drop them, the easier they're gonna to be to peel. Certain woods and, and logs are easy to peel, easier to peel than others. Cedar in the spring is super easy, so is white oak. So you say, and white oak makes good poles. The thing about cedar is, although I just told you there's a bug that eats it, right? But for the most part, it's um, a pretty good, um, it doesn't get a whole lot of bugs in it, so. It's, it actually deters things like termites and stuff like that. So it's, it keeps bugs out. It has natural preservative in it and all that shit. You know, and it's just, I actually use the logs and so does my son, the genius, to uh, build all kinds of different projects. Um, I have built houses where I actually used logs as the frame I've worked on log houses. So when my son first started, you know, it's like, uh, he said, are you gonna peel the logs, mom? I said, man, I'm so tired of peeling logs. I've peeled logs most of my life, actually, and uh, for different projects. But they're fantastic to work with. I mean, you know, you look at, look at the size of a two before and how rinky dink it looks compared to this. Now this was an invention. I stole this idea from my son, the genius. See those two little wheels there? Okay, and then on the back, I just have a couple of nails tied in at an angle to kind of hold the, but the two little wheels allow me to roll this as I go. So I don't have to, so yeah, my son, the genius. I stole that idea from him. I could have general just pretend like look how fucking smart i am look what i figured out i figured out i'd take these wheels and make like you roll a log around but that would be wrong well lynn forgot to silence her phone so right in the middle of that we got an interruption of course i probably would have waited and and just turned it on in about 10 15 minutes when i have this all peeled so that i could say yeah look it only took me a few minutes to do that see how quick that was yeah, it ain't quick, but it does help. And we take this stuff and we use this, this is the, the bark off of this. Talk about fantastic fire starters for the winter. Just bundle this up. Lynn was bundling it up the other day. Just bundle it up, tie it up, throw that in the fire when it's getting dry, put a match to it, you got instant fire. So, like I said, nothing goes to waste around here. Um, this is uh, one of our two carports, um, and I'm working in here today, which is, I'd rather work in front of my shop over there, but I'm working here because 
as I said in that last video, we're about to have about seven days of rain. So I don't know. See, okay, right there, see that? And you see that little bit of sawdust in there? That's one of those boring bugs. Is that a little bit of sawdust and see how it makes a track? Yeah, I see that. Yeah, they're bastards. We didn't even have those till, what, about five years ago? Five years ago, they started attacking our juniper trees. We also have now, what which we didn't have before, we have a, have a bug that's eaten our oak trees too, so, yeah. We've dealt with a lot of that stuff. These, these logs here, I actually harvested when I trimmed those trees over there above the picnic tables and benches. I guess now is as good a time as any to explain our sad tale of woe. Okay, so as I've told you before, I don't like it when people say I'm lucky because I've never had a lucky day in my life. And the truth is, that every single thing I ever did to try to make money failed fucking abysmally. As in, everybody else, the minute I did it, it could be something that was making other people billions of dollars, I start doing it, there's no money in it. Go figure. I'm expecting at any moment for YouTube to burn completely to the ground and never make anybody else another dime because I'm doing this now. So why do I say shit like that? Well, I started writing at a time when writers were started immediately making less money. Then I opened a publishing house right before the shit hit the fan with the publishing industry. And you know what I did last year after I bought this place? I turned it into a B&B. &B. You know, six months before the coronavirus. <laughs> That's the kind of things I have. I was turning this in and a b and isn't even what I wanted to do with it. What I wanted to do with it was to build like a, an artist creative type of colony where people could come, hang out, have events, talk about big things and art and writing. And I forgot that the creative com uh, community, well, they're all as broke as I am. So nobody, they all wanted to do it but none of them had any money, and I couldn't afford to do it for free. I know, go figure, what kind of asshole doesn't just let people come and stay at their place for free? Run up their electric bill and their water bill. I'm that kind of asshole. So, and I wanted to do events. I wanted to do kids' birthday parties. I wanted to do weddings, things like that. And if you'll pan over there, did you show me? Yes, I did. Okay, I see, them. so that's, I built all of that out of those slabs I keep talking about, and logs, so that we can have all that stuff. And that didn't come to fruition. So um, we decided to do a BMB. And then of course, and we were starting to make a little bit of money, not just pay our bills, but make a little bit of money. And then of course, COVID-19 came and now we're closed. So when you hear me bitching, and you will hear me bitching about all the people that are whining about keeping their businesses going and their things going and seem completely unconcerned with whether they kill people in their places of business or not. I'm not just saying I'm losing my ass too. I'm losing my ass too. It's just not as important to me because I know, because I've always done it, that I can get through a financial crunch. I can always find a way to make it through a financial crunch. I just use less. And basically, that's what I'd like to teach all of you to do. You wanna screw the corporations completely over and start to take our country back a little bit at a time? Stop wasting. Stop buying their shit. Stop believing their hype. Stop making them rich. They make sure they pay you just enough so you can pay your, pay your bills and buy all the shit they tell you you need to have to be happy. You know that car, that if you buy that car you're gonna get laid? That never happens. Buying a Lincoln is not gonna get you laid. Buying a Jeep is not gonna get you laid and if it does, 
well, more power to you. But the thing, people always think, oh, if I had a new car, I'd be happy. If I had this or that, I'd be happy. The problem with that is it wastes all the other time in your life where you could have been having some happiness, but you're way too busy waiting for your ship to come in. I know because that's what I did most of my life. And then one day I realized my ship already came in. You know what it was? It was a fucking sardine can with a little stick in it and a paper sail. That was my ship. I can either make things happen to the best of my ability or I can sit and have nothing. Right now is the time for you to start getting creative. How are you going to get through this thing? How are you going to keep your finances going? It's not by waiting in line down at Burger King to get a, ha a meal. Not by waiting at McDonald's in the line to drive up to the window and get a happy meal. That's not going to help you. It's not by taking your stimulus money, which you should have used to pay your bills, and going down and buying a new lawnmower or a new color television set, which happened here. I don't know if it happened in the rest of the country, but all of the super centers in this entire area ran out of television sets. Yeah, that's what I need. I can't watch, I can't possibly watch my old television set through the uh, pandemic. I need a new one. I can't use my old mower either. We have a friend who works at Lowe's, which is, makes her considered an uh, essential employee. She works at Lowe's. She said they sold more, and more, more mowers in one day than they normally sell in a month. That's not going to help. The thing to do right now is to hang on to whatever cash you can hang on to so that you can make it the long haul. We don't, quit pretending that, people need to quit pretending like they know what's gonna happen. We don't know what's gonna happen. But you don't have to be part of the numbers. You don't have to be part of the statistics. You can protect yourself and your loved ones. Don't be bullied in to believe in the hype. Go and peel your logs. Go and Make your garden out of crap containers you got sitting around. You know, mend your clothes. We, you know, I had, a, I had a friend that went out and took her stimulus package and bought an all new wardrobe. To go where? To go where? At any rate, as you can see, this is a long drawn out process which you don't need to watch all of because it's really boring, okay? You guys have a good one. Goodbye.